Hey, six graders, this is Mrs. Huang. Congratulations on graduation. Right now, I want to demonstrate our last project, which is just making our slideshow for graduation. Once you log into Google Classroom, make sure you're going to the sixth grade art class. And at the top of the page, go to classwork. Once you're in there, you should see an assignment under the category sixth grade graduation slideshow. Make sure you look at this assignment and you can open it. And there's a slide inside there. So for this demonstration, I just want to talk about some of the things you can do with your slide. Now for this demonstration, there's this example slide that you will not see by the time you get started on this project. The first slide after that will be my example that's finished. But for this demonstration, I'm going to show you what you can do to your slide. The first thing you need to keep in mind is that you only should be editing your slide. These slides are organized by your teacher in alphabetical order first. So Miss Butler, you can see right here is this red slide. If you slide down, it will be Miss Rogers next with a yellow background slide. And then it will be Mr. Shinoda with a green slide and Miss Welch with a blue slide coming down here. Now, depending on when you get started on this project, there may be less white ones because other people will be starting on their project. But after you find your teacher's first slide, Look underneath that slide to find your slide in alphabetical order by last name. Once you find your slide, you should only be working on that one slide. So for this demonstration, here I go. I'm going to start it off. You don't need to do the first part because I've already put everybody's name in it. But I'm going to go ahead and change that right now. So I'm going to put my first and last name in it. So I just type my first and last name. At the beginning, I don't want you to make any design changes to your project. Make sure you get all the elements on your slide first before you do any design work. That means changing the fonts, changing the size, changing the positions, and adding other effects to it. So first, you just want to make sure you get all these things done on your slide on a very basic level. Where it says a picture of you when you were younger, this is just any picture you can find of yourself. If you're using a Chromebook from school, uh, you might have to find a real picture or something online and try to save it to your computer somehow. If you can't, you have to use the camera that's built into your webcam. You might have to get a physical picture and take a picture with it with the webcam. And I'll show you all that right now. So for this first picture, a picture of you when you were younger, you can add a picture two ways. You can go to insert at the top or you can click on this button to insert image. Now one thing to keep in mind is that on Google Slides, this is not an image placeholder because you can't make an image placeholder on Google Slide. So it just looks like it's a placeholder, which means that it's a spot that would automatically put your picture in there to fit, but it's not going to do that. These are just a template recommendation right now. So just click on it and you can actually delete it by clicking with the, the box and getting rid of these two boxes once you understand where the pictures are supposed to go. Okay, so I'm going to insert an image with the menu by going to insert image and you can either upload it from a computer or like I said before if you're on a Chromebook you probably have to get a physical picture and do camera right here so I'm gonna upload from the computer and I'm gonna find an old picture of myself click open and it should put it on there don't worry about changing the size or position right now this one for a current picture of yourself after you delete this box just hit select it and hit delete now another way to get your current picture is by going to your webcam and you click here. So I'll show you just in case you're using a Chromebook. You can go to camera and then you can just take a look at your camera, snap a shot and insert it that way if you need a current picture and you can't find it anywhere else. So I'm just going to just put these two pictures up, have my name already there and then you're going to fill these three questions off at the bottom. So the first question says, start it at Burbank in the blank grade. So if you start it in first grade when you came to Burbank, then you put in first. So I'll just highlight it and just type in first. Just make sure you put the space, and I'm going to put a period at the end of that also. If you started in kindergarten, it would just read, start at Burbank in, and then kindergarten, period. Okay. So whatever grade you started at Burbank, just complete the sentence and make sure the sentence makes sense. Okay. The second question, when I grow up, I want to be a, when I was around your age, I wanted to be a baseball player. So I'm going to put a baseball player. Now, if you want to be something that starts with a vowel, like an A, E, I, O, or U, 
then you want to make sure that this changes from A to an. So like an artist, for instance. I'm going to erase that. But if it's not, if it starts with a consonant, then you can just do A and then use your thing that you want to grow up to be. Okay. And then my favorite subject in school is, mine was PE. So I'm going to put P dot E here. Okay. And that will fill that out. That's the basic information you need for your slide. And then after that, you can really go off and decorate it however you want by rotating your pictures, changing the font, the size, adding drop shadows, changing the color. But the one thing I want you to keep in mind is that when you're doing this, make sure that you're able to see everything clearly because you don't want to put distracting things around your images and make your words hard to read because these slides are going to be moving along pretty fast during the presentation. You don't want people to lose that information. So the first thing is I'm going to change my background color. So I click, right click on the background anywhere there's empty space and go to change background. And I'm going to do Burbank color. So I'm going to choose a solid blue. Okay. Now I'm doing this on a very basic level because some people would like to go further and you can explore as much as you want. But I'm just going to do a very basic one for right now and you can explore things on your own. I'm going to change the color and font and size of my name. So right here, if I select it, notice I have an option that pops up right here that says format option. Okay, Keep that in mind later. But first, I'm just going to change the font to something on my computer. I'm going to make it larger. Go to 60. And then I'm going to change the color of it to yellow just to match the Burbank colors that we got. Okay. And look, when I deselect it, that means when I get off of it, Notice that thing went away, the format option. So I'm going to click on it right now and show you other things you can quickly do with it. So if you have it selected and you click format options, you can add drop shadows. You can do a reflection on it. Once again, I'm not going to go over everything. I just want to show you a couple of things. So if I want to add a drop shadow, I can click on the box and then click on the down arrow and I can play around with these things. What I recommend first is doing the distance because then you can really start to see your shadow because at the beginning, they put it right there in the corner. It's barely peeking out behind your name, and you won't be able to see it that much. But I like to pull it away first and then change things like the transparency, which means how much can you see through it. If I slide it to the left, it becomes darker, which means it's less transparent. And if I move it to the right, it's more transparent, meaning you can see through it more easily. Okay? So that's transparency. Angle changes the position of the shadow. You can see it moving depending on how I change the angle. And then distance is how far, like I said before. And then the blur radius just makes it more blurry the, the more you move it to the right. So I'm just going to add a little shadow, make it very blurry. Okay. You can also rotate your words. If you click it, this little white, this little white circle filled in with blue, actually, you can click it and drag it and rotate it. Okay. And this picture, you can do the same thing, rotate it, if you're changing the size, make sure you grab it from a corner, upper right corner, bottom right corner, bottom left corner, or the top left corner. Because if you drag it from the side like this, you can distort your image. Okay? So anytime you're changing the size of an image, make sure you're grabbing it from a corner and then change it. And I'm also going to add some drop shadows on these two images. Okay? I'm going to rotate this one also, move it around, and add some drop shadows on these also. There we go. Add a drop shadow on that. Now you can see on the bottom of my page, my three questions are very difficult to read. So I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to change the font on these also. And maybe make them a little bit bigger and change the color to white. Just so I can see it. Because like I said before, these are not going to be on the screen for that long. So you want to make sure it's easily legible or easily readable when you see it on your screen. All right, I'm going to turn this up to 14, turn this and change the color to white. And there we go. And then you don't want to make you want to make sure things are kind of evenly spread. So click on it, move them over if you need to. Okay? And that's a very basic level of a slide right now. If you have any questions about this, you can always send me a message on Google Classroom 
or you can send me an email. Also, feel free to add as much as you want to this project. I know many of you have lots of experience with Google Slide, so you can make it a lot more designed than this. This is just a very basic tutorial for those that need the help. I can't wait to see everybody's slideshow, and then we're going to have some surprises for you also in addition to your portion of the student slideshow. Good luck again in middle school, and it was great teaching everybody. I'm sorry we weren't able to meet in person to do this, but hopefully this will be something you'll be able to look back on as a, a fond memory of yours. Bye-bye.